Attention! It is time to change the channel! Live from Philadelphia! It's Mr. Pritchard's Art Room! Welcome back to the classroom. I am your host, Mr. Pritchard. Are you ready to get to work? Who, who was that? We have a new host. I would like to teach this lesson. I'm the real Mr. Pritchard, and welcome to the classroom, and hope everybody's safe and well. And We have an interesting lesson today. We have a group of artists making art with a powerful statement and changing something into art. It's interesting. Now, these artists are taking trash. Oh, oh, well, that, not this kind of trash. This has a bit of a smell to it. Ooh, ooh. I'm not talking about trash like expired food or, oh, oh, this trash smells pretty bad. Oh, can we get rid of this trash? Oh, oh, thank you. I'm talking about trash like maybe plastic bottles, caps, maybe old straws, um, maybe a broken bicycle, broken ladder, old shoes. Now some of this stuff could get recycled and sometimes people don't recycle things. And what these artists are doing are taking these items and making something new out of it to make a powerful statement. Speaking out maybe for the environment or for animal protection still can't get over that smell from that <clears throat> the last round of the trash bags Oof. so they're taking something that would be considered waste and making it into a powerful statement we're going to go over uh, several artists let's get started that is a lot of plastic i'm thinking five thousand bottles now, every artist we're going to be talking about uses waste to make a powerful statement in art. And we're not talking about, like I said before, like stinky old food waste. We're talking about plastics, maybe broken basketball hoops, broken bicycles. That is a lot of plastic waste in that town. It's like a river of plastic. That is a lot of plastic in the ocean. And the first artist we're going to speak about actually uses plastic that they find on the waterways and on the beaches and lakes and uses it in the art. And here's our first artist, Alexandro Doran. Taking plastic found, as I said, in oceanways, rivers, on the beaches, on the sands, and making it into art. Now this artist in particular is not making art that has this particular look to it like a person or an object. These toothbrushes seem to have the appearance of flowers growing out of the land. These green mint bottles, the name of this is algae, and it looks like algae. All the mint bottles put together in a formation looks like algae on the land from the water. Interesting artwork. This is Bekua and the New Roots group. This is a group of children making art, speaking out, for problems going on in the earth when it comes to waste and making artwork from the plastic waste. Let's get into the next artist. Excuse me for the name. I believe it's Veronica Richotova. Beautiful stuff out of plastic. Here's a beautiful butterfly. A lot of times the object I noticed is like a two liter soda bottle. Here is a bat and a bright cherry red lobster. All made from plastic I believe soda bottles, water bottles. I like this one too, the bent up into flowers and ripped up pieces from the bottles to make flower leaves. Different than our first artist that these objects actually represent something, an animal or a flower. Here are the plastic cactus or cacti. They look just like cactus planets. I wonder if they feel like cactus planets. Here are the penguins. 
I wonder how the plastic got those particular colors of the penguins. I wonder if they were painted afterwards. Gotta love the fake ice also. Ah, the alligator. Bunch of floating, looks like soda bottles. Looks real to me. That alligator looks kind of dangerous and scary. Floats too. The frog. One of my favorites. I like how the top of the soda bottles or water bottles are used as the eyes on the head. Now, not only animals and shapes and flowers, yet also fake food made from plastic. I thought this food was real. It's Japanese sushi. I thought it was real sushi. It took me forever to realize it was fake food. This is our next artist, Willie Cole. Photograph of Willie Cole sitting in a chair made from high heeled shoes. On the right is an image of Willie Cole with his son. Willie Cole, we have studied before in class. Some of my third and fourth graders have studied Willie Cole before. Here's Willie Cole using old broken hair dryers. Willie Cole making a statue out of shoes. Looks just like an African statue. Amazing, the bending of the high heels for arms and to make feet. Willie Cole using water bottles to make cars. And these cars are big too, I would say life size. Amazing that it's just water bottles. Tons of empty water bottles. Here's Willie Cole's bird. That bird is big. I'm thinking that bird is bigger than me. Not too sure what was used to make the beak. I know the rest is all water bottles. Willie Cole didn't just make shapes Here we of have animals, a more circular object. shape. Maybe a moon, maybe a sun with bright cherry red shoes, pink grapefruit shoes. Here's some of my favorite Willie Cole's face made from the shoes. And I love the animal on the right. Kind of reminds me of a lizard or a little dog. I'm going to show a couple more of the mask. The mask to me remind me of African mask or Japanese mask. Amazing, just different color shoe can represent the mouth or the eyes or just amazing, even the tongue. Here's our next artist. This is Kenny Scharf. Kenny Scharf didn't just make art from found objects. A lot of art is paintings. Picture on the left is more recent. Picture on the right is during the 1980s. Himself, Keith Haring, Little Angel, and Jean-Michel Basquiat are all in that photo. Amazing photograph. Kenny Scharf mostly did abstract pop kind of art. Let's get into some of the other art with the found kind of plastic. That is a lot of old toys, like old cars that people would ride in when you were a child, put up on the top of a building. I wonder what the meaning is. just seems kind of random all stacked. This has kind of a box feel with random pieces of old toys and Legos and old tires from a car for a toy and pieces of cones for a rocket, an antenna, a bike chain. This one, the pieces go together to kind of make an old television, all the old toys and random colors painted on there. Interesting. Hmm. It's like an old radio, cell phones, and the artist is painting faces on some of the old broken pieces of objects too, the plastic broken pieces. Looks like some old boxes in there. Here is our last artist, Bordel II. Definitely speaking out for animals. Not only is this plastic waste hurting us, it's hurting animals. The artist makes these giant murals from the plastic waste of the animals. These murals seem to be two stories tall and look exactly like the animals. Taking the plastic and moving them into certain positions to give the appearance of a face. Have a little video of the artist. Let's go to the video. My name is Arthur Bordal, also known as Bordal II, and I live in Lisbon. 
This part of the video shows some of the waste. Old broken plastic toys, looks like trash, recycling cans, old uh, car part from a bumper, plastic bumper. And they're starting to put it together into art. I want people to understand that this is not about making something beautiful out of trash. Uh, the thing that I care about is what's behind the piece, behind the trash. Uh, and that's the idea that I already said 100,000 million times. That's it. We are using these materials that are destroying the nature and these creatures, the animals itself. And we use this trash to create images of them, images of the victims. Well, you heard the artist using this trash waste to create images of these animals, a victim of all this trash pollution. Here we have two owls made from this plastic waste. Unbelievable. Sometimes a lot of bright colors are used, sometimes closer to the colors of the animal. One of my favorites, the giant iguana giant green mint iguana about the size of the whole side of a house it super real to me all just from found pieces of plastic waste it seems to be unreal the pieces put together for the legs and everything here we have two birds and the gorilla back to half in bright abstract colors half more realistic interesting how the style changes Thought I saw a ladder there in one of the birds' face. I wonder if that's a jaguar or a cougar or a lion. And then the rat. Or maybe, is it a mouse? Looks like a cage in part of the mouse. Mm, the wolf, half and half. Kind of seems like a broken shopping cart in an ear there. I do see a tire as an eye. Huh. Interesting. Here is one, and I wondered if the artist was speaking out about treatment in zoos for animals. I put two protesters here, but multiple penguins made from the plastic. And I wondered that because some of the writing behind it. Uh, last one, the sea turtle. A giant hula hoop and tire as an eye and a lot of plastic waste and the shell. Just tons of buckets and... Looks like the top of a sandbox. Pieces of just old stuff that broke. And that's it for our art examples. Did you have a favorite? Did you have a least favorite? I really like the iguana. Now these artists speaking out with a similar statement for the environment, for animals, and using a similar supply. The plastic waste, these found broken objects, a broken ladder, a broken bicycle, maybe a broken basketball that's been deflated and won't inflate anymore. And the interesting thing is the artists come from all around the world, not just the United States. We have an artist from Portugal in the group, Czechoslovakia, Bekua, and every one of the artists are doing something similar with the supply making a powerful message, speaking out for a change. Now we're going to do a similar lesson in the classroom. Let's move on to the art production of our lesson. Maybe I'm not ready to move on yet to the art production part of the lesson. Let's continue with the art examples. We're moving on. I'm the real Mr. Pritchard. No, no. I'm the real Mr. Pritchard. And I say... It is time to move on. Let's start making some art. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm the real Mr. Pritchard, and let's move on into the art production part of our lesson.